My congratulations to all the award recipients, and thank you all for being here. Uh, welcome to this convocation and the beginning uh, of the academic year. Um, I want to talk to you just uh, a few minutes about uh, primarily the strategic plan for the university. Um, let me see whether we can get it up here. Oh, going the wrong way. All right, I'll, I'll try that. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, because that is really an effort that's been taken a lot of time last year, and we're now ready to move it into the final stages. Uh, but again, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the award winners. Uh, welcome to both all the new faculty and all our faculty and staff. Uh, and let's hope that the wonderful weather that we have here this week will stay with us for at least a little while so that all the students will also get to enjoy our campus in this kind of beautiful environment. Before I start talking about the strategic plan, just a few highlights of the past year. Um, this uh, sort of gallery of rogues, these are the seven presidents of the seven former OUS institutions. But what was really amazing that with the demise of OUS, we actually worked together better than ever before. And a big area that we worked on, including all of the, our boards of trustees, was to jointly lobby the legislature for what we called the 755 million for the biennium for the seven universities together. Well, we didn't quite get to the 755 million, but we got to 700 million, which was pretty good, and which is the reason why I think for the first time since I've been president, we didn't have to go through a cutting exercise. It was kind of a unique experience, uh, but I could get used to it, I tell you. Um, and we're gonna come back in the February session to try to get the remaining $55 million. We'll see how far we get on that, but we're pretty optimistic we'll at least get something. We're very proud, as you know, the US News and World Report rankings don't mean a darn thing except for the ones that we're good at. And this one was really good, the most innovative universities, particularly because we have been working at that. If you think about our four-year degree guarantee, our credit for prior learning work, our flexible degrees, our rethink work, uh, so many things that we've been innovating on our new budget model, we are the only university in Oregon that got on this list, and you should give yourself all a round of applause because, because of our collective work here that we got there. And then I know that nobody comes to Portland State for football, but you know, it's kind of nice when you beat a Pac-12 team. And uh, I think it is, uh, thank you. We are the only undefeated Oregon football team, yeah. And, but I think more importantly, uh, I have really seen a new spirit in athletics of a new effort to reach out to the academy. At each of the football games, the, they will feature a different college. I don't quite know whether that's going to mean, you know, field goal kicking between philosophy and physics or something like that. But I hope that you will respond to that by coming to some of the games, whether it's football or basketball or volleyball, and respond to the work that our athletes, our coaches, and our athletic administrators are doing. Now let me talk about a little bit about our new strategic plan. Um, as you know, last year at this event, the convocation, I told you about the charge that our new board of trustees had given us to put together a new strategic plan. We had done one in 2008, which we then updated in 2011, but neither one of those efforts was a very broad-based participatory one. We wanted to now start a campus-wide conversation about the direction that Portland State is going in, how do we balance all the various priorities that we have, and what should we really focus on. And over the past year, we have really had the most extensive discussion about the goals, priorities, and vision of Portland State that probably has ever taken place. Literally thousands of faculty, staff, and students participated. And if that took bribing them with ice cream, so be it. <laughs> More than 100 people were actively involved on the strategic plan development team and on the topic teams in regular meetings. And then many of you were involved in the ALPS retreat that we had earlier this year in the spring. And I want to show you just a brief video which shows some of the highlights 
of that Alps retreat and of the strategic plan. Scholars and students of color or other diverse groups are attracted to the opportunity to make a difference in their community. So if we sell that opportunity. I think that the strategic plan is, they're really looking to it to be um, their North Star. You know, we spend an awful lot of time getting uh, input and feedback and good ideas and different perspectives from all different kinds of strategies. We had group meetings, individual meetings, meet with different stakeholder groups, web-based feedback. We have thousands and thousands of people who have given us ideas. And so to take those thousands of ideas, consider them, put them together in a meaningful package and so that you can get some really powerful and uh, compelling ideas to lead the, the strategic plan has been a bit of a challenge but a lot of fun. Serving on the strategic plan development team, I've had an opportunity to interface with a really wide cross-section of stakeholders at the campus. We all really want to see the best for Portland State, and we've had some really rich discussions about how to improve our university. We should read a couple of them and see, right. to calibrate, yeah. and then we can come back. The right. teams have been organized around some very major themes. Each of them developed a set of initiatives that they think will move that area forward. But today's the first time we put, put them up side by side and begin to look at them, and the amount of uh, interne interconnection and crosswalking between them really suggest to me where there, there's some really powerful ideas that we can put together when we do the final report, put these together in a very exciting, meaningful way that will show a lot of congruence across all the different people that have been working so hard on this plan. This is a very important time for Portland State as we move forward. We are an independent institution now and, um, and need to make some hard decisions about what we uh, want to be known for, what we want to continue to excel at, um, and the things that we'll need to drop off. We're so good in urban everything. That's very interesting to me. The conditions for higher education are changing in Oregon and elsewhere, and I, and I particularly appreciate the fact that Portland State is taking stock of where we have been and trying to leverage what we currently do as we anticipate the future. I've been really, really pleased with the level of student engagement with the strategic plan development so far. We've really had some students come out of the woodwork to give their two cents and offer their input into the strategic plan and it's just been a really heartwarming experience. It's inspiring to be a representative for grad students, you know, like it's a heavy responsibility, but it is also exhausting in its way and I am only but one voice that, you know, that represents, you know, a couple thousand students that really don't have any kind of meaningful representation within the greater university. Putting students first is really going to be critical to our success as a, as a university. Um, faculty are clearly important, uh, finances are important, affordability is important, but Student success is really what we as an institution have to be focused on. We need to find out exactly now before students become alumni, what are their needs and how can we address it? How do we support them? And a lot of it uh, for at least the alumni association is about connections. Plan writing is always a complicated affair, but you know, plans get written all the time. The trick is an implementation. I think my big hope is that the strategic plan doesn't become a laundry list, but actually becomes a set of guiding strategic themes for the university that help us decide what not to do, as well as where to really put our energy and resources. We need to have a document that gets us all on the same page where we're accountable and say, hey, we went through a really rigorous process to prioritize these sets of issues and we're going to stick by them and we're going to see them through. Over the summer, 
uh, a small writing team took all that material and put together a, a draft of what had been discussed uh, that is now being sort of whipped into final shape by the strategic plan development team again. And uh, early next month, they will be releasing that as the draft strategic plan that will be brought to the broader community. And both the student senate and the faculty senate will be asked to comment on it directly. But many others will have opportunities as well. And I'll come back to that uh, in a minute. Uh, what you see here, I'm not going to go through the whole strategic plan, but it has a couple of key components. One of them is what we call the strategic clarity piece, which talks about the vision, the mission, values, and so on. And then the second main part talks about the substance, the five main themes. So this is the current version. Oh, by the way, there's still a draft. Everything could still change, although this one won't change very much because it's been kicking around for a while now. And as you will see, both in the vision and then in the mission statement that will be on the next slide, we try to balance the talk about opportunity and excellence, the focus on the local and the global, the teaching, the research and the engagement, the liberal arts, and applied work. You'll see that, you see that in this vision, and you see it also in the mission, which fortunately has a few more words, so we can balance all of that. You see again the notion of focusing on the region as well as the world, on issues of sustainability and engagement as sort of our key identifiers and how we differ from other universities, and of course the mentioning of the research and, and the teaching. We spend a lot of time uh, on values. What is our unique position? What do we want to be known for? Again, very important here, I like this first one particularly, that access, inclusion, and equity are not sort of balanced with excellence. No, they're pillars of excellence. You can't have excellence as we define it without access, inclusion, and equity. Our excellence is not built on exclusion as it is in so many institutions. The plan then goes on to talk about five themes listed here. Those of you who uh, knew how to recite the five pre previous themes by heart, as I'm sure you all did, um, will recognize much of it. Obviously, a focus on student success. Obviously, an a focus on excellence in teaching and research. Uh, what we called previously provides civic leadership through partnership comes back here as strengthening leadership in engagement, building on a history that we've had as an institution for a long time. A commitment to equity is called out much more explicitly than it was in the previous plan. And then finally, innovating for long-term sustainability, which talks about the wide variety of challenges of both organizational innovation and strength and financial stability. This slide provides just a few examples. Under each of those five themes, there are about four to five specific initiatives, sometimes as much, much many as six. So this is just exemplary of, of some of those kinds of initiatives that we will have. The plan will not go into total detail about the precise implementation. We'd wind up with a 100-page working document. That will come both in the course of the year and, frankly, it's already being done by a lot of committees and task forces and organizational units in the university. You know, a strategic plan at its best should actually have no surprises. It should not be about going in a totally different way. It should find a way to capsulize and verbalize what we already know we are and where we want to head, but then also give us a framework and an agreed upon set of words and concepts that we can use to make decisions about the future. And that's, I think, what this working draft is currently doing. And as I said, it will uh, still undergo some more work. This is one of those word clouds of just running all the words in the plan through the counter. And as you would expect, and as is right, the word students comes up most often. I was pleasantly surprised about community coming in so often. Faculty, research, teaching and learning, if you put those together, of course, they're, they're also very big. They're pretty much the same, you know, two sides of the same coin. Words like equity and engagement. I think they just give you a very quick synopsis of what this plan is about. Now, we hope that the discussion we've had 
will make clear that we continue to be jointly dedicated to this concept of let knowledge serve the city, but there will still be different opinions on the relative importance and emphasis on any one theme or particular initiative. But I hope it helps clarify that if at a certain point one thing gets done, one thing gets talked about or invested in, it doesn't mean that other things are not important. For instance, by clearly acknowledging both research and high quality teaching, we don't mean that when we provide money for research that the teaching is not important. Or when we invest in advisors, it doesn't mean we don't care about faculty. It talks about engagement with Portland, but it's always presented as ultimately serving the whole nation and the world. You know, we all know that we're not gonna get many national rankings for all of our programs, whether it's in the humanities or hard sciences, but that doesn't mean that a class like Anne McLennan's, which used the illuminated manuscripts, is not absolutely an amazing, wonderful opportunity for our students to delve into something that just taught them everything about how important the combination of history and economics and warfare and art and availability of materials and how things are preserved over time, how that all comes together to deepen one's understanding of both another culture and one's own. You know, applied, flu applied fluid dynamics for which we got a lot of international attention because of our espresso cup that was used in the space station. You know, that is great stuff, and we should continue to do that work, even though we will never be the world leader in space research, but we have specific people who just do amazing and stunning work that rightly brings attention to the institution. We are, though, a world leader in how you connect university knowledge and learning to dealing with local challenges and opportunity. And that's where our emphasis on equity, I think, really comes in. As we all know, the growing inequality in this country is a critical issue that must be dealt with. And as a university, we're dealing with it through the very things we do, the teaching and providing opportunities. But also many of us are explicitly dealing with it through the research do, that we do, the way that we help students succeed, the financial aid that we provide, and so on. And the plan now has a much greater uh, detail, level of detail on how we focus on issues of equity and diversity. During the next two months, we will have a final round of discussions. This plan will be our North Star, as Raylene McMillan said, but it does not take the place of all the millions of more routine things that we also all will continue to do. We will again, as a way of getting broader input, have another strategic ice cream. This one is mostly aimed at students. But then for the grown-ups, we will also have a sliders and suds <laughs> on November 5th for faculty and staff. So I hope to see many of you there. And our plan to end with another, not gallery of rogues, but the gallery of our wonderful new board of trustees our plan is to deliver this strategic plan to the Board of Trustees for their approval in December. As you can see, we still have a lot of work to do, but a lot has been done already, and I look forward to working with many of you as we finalize this plan, as well as work on the many, many other things that we will do together. I want to thank everyone for coming here together, and it's now my pleasure to invite you all to join us for some food and some drinks. Thank you very much and go Vikes! <laughs> <laughs>